Hi, my name is Emily Poynton, and I identify both as a feminist and Catholic. Hi, my name is Dominic Lynch, and I identify both as conservative and Catholic. Hi, my name is Lizzie Sextro, and I identify as both queer and Catholic. I think my Catholic faith in high school was kind of stagnant in a way. Um, I had a very fixed idea of what faith looked like and uh, what prayer looked like, what Catholicism looked like. Um, and I think as I entered college, I was able to express it in a way that was more dynamic and more full and more life-giving. College has been a really great time to grow in my identity as a Catholic, especially at a Catholic university. Um, it was in college that I was able to discover the, the Latin Mass, the traditional Mass, um, and it was in college where I was really able to learn more about my faith on a deeper intellectual level than I have been before. Being raised Catholic, I had always been presented with like, this is what the religion is, this is how you live it out, period. And being at Loyola, it, the religion has really been presented as a dynamic thing, something that you engage with, something that you make conscious choices to follow or not. And um, I've really been pushed to critically evaluate what it is that my faith holds. So that has been really helpful in teaching me to do more with faith than I would have otherwise. So my identity as a conservative, I mean that that also has deeper roots. Um, I've been a conservative, or I've identified as conservative I should say, as I mean really as long as I've been politically active or interested in politics. Um, but again, as long as my identity as a Catholic, it grew the most in my college years because all of a sudden I was thrown into an environment where people didn't think like me. Um, but that, you know, that offered a lot of great opportunities to really challenge my own beliefs, but also to grow in my own beliefs. I have come to consider myself a feminist because I have found through studies that the genders are not held to be equal or are and are not allowed to have equal contribution to society around the world and in the US and that my problem with that and desire to work to rectify that is upheld and strengthened by my identity as a Catholic because I believe that men and women were created equal and both in the image and likeness of God. Also, I think there's a stigma around um, being either Catholic or queer so that you can't be one if you're the other. Um, so people automatically assume oftentimes that if you're Catholic, you can't be a feminist, you can't be pro-choice. Um, but um, especially, I think there's a compartmentalization that if you're a Catholic, you can't identify as queer. Um, and obviously, like, I'm a living, breathing being who um, is going against that stigma and saying that's not true, um, because I am, right? Divinely intended tensions, I think that's really interesting. Um, tensions usually connotes negativity, bad things. You know, you don't want to be, you don't want to have tensions with someone else because it means there was a disagreement that didn't end well. So I think to say that tensions perhaps could be divinely intended raises a lot of interesting points. I think that divinely intended tensions implies paradoxes, um, implies that within our world and within our society, there can be nothing, maybe not nothing, but there are a lot of things that don't fit perfectly into boxes or compartments. I think that tensions can be divinely intended um, because it, like, tensions don't necessarily have to be a cause of strife. 
It can be something to unite around pursuing a common goal. Well, it's been said that iron sharpens iron. And so uh, tensions in and of themselves are not bad. I think that oftentimes we have a problem with that as well um, because I think it's easier for us as humans, um, as a part of a society, um, to fit things into boxes and to, um, to try to explain everything. Um, but maybe sometimes things aren't always explainable. Um, maybe sometimes these tensions need to be there for us to understand something greater. I think there's a, a lot of tension between conservatives and liberals in the church, not just in the church hierarchy, which is what a lot of people think about. Perhaps when they think about the church, they think about the Roman Curia um, and the cardinals and the bishops of the world. But there's also a conservative liberal tension um, between conservative and liberal Catholics. The people who go to church every Sunday. I think that the most prominent place of Pers a conservative person could feel isolated from the church right now is in Pope Francis's call to reevaluate how economic systems function. Pope Francis is really criticizing capitalism and materialism as a way to call people to solidarity with the poor and, and to recognize the poorest situation in the world. As someone who is not a politician or an economist, it seems to me that the conservative political identity really invests in capitalism. So to hear a critique about the way you view the world working is really difficult. I don't think Francis is, is liberal. I think perhaps he has a different emphasis on different topics than than John Paul II or Benedict XVI. Um, and he emphasizes different aspects of the same church. Um, it's, it definitely leaves people scratching their heads sometimes, some of his comments. Um, but I think ultimately he's doing a great service to the church by, uh, by focusing on things that haven't been focused on perhaps as much as they should have been. Or even like, if I'm thinking of some of the comments that Pope Francis has made, um, of course, you know, the press asked him about homosexuality, like, Pope Francis, what do you think, you know, and he made that comment of, who am I to judge, right? And I think even that, that, that one small comment um, might set some people off. That might be inflammatory for people. And so, yes, I have felt challenged by Francis, his uh, calls to help the poor in a more direct way. Um, his statements on social issues are definitely more challenging than what Benedict emphasized. I think that feminism has a lot that it can offer to the Catholic Church. Um, speaking as someone who has never felt out of place based on my gender. Um, I grew up being an altar server. I was really involved at my parish starting when I was eight. Um, so I have never felt like I don't have a place. I recognize that other women do not feel the same way and have felt very isolated based on their gender within the church. Ever since we have had uh, priests and bishops and a hierarchy built, um, they have been men. Um, and to what extent are women being excluded from that? And I have, you know, personal narratives of, of women who feel called to be priests and to lead in the Catholic Church in that way, and who are painfully, painfully hurt um, by the injustices that they experience based on that patriarchy. I think women in the church sometimes feel blocked out. They feel boxed out of, of leadership positions because the church hierarchy is completely male. I think that Pope Francis's desire to have a new theology of women explored and created is a good idea. I don't see a lot of that happening yet. I 
I think it was Francis in the first year of his pontificate said that the church needs a deeper uh, theology for women specifically. And I think that's very, I think that's important. And I think that was an overdue statement, but I'm glad it's out there now. And I'm glad theologians can start devoting some time to that now. In, in creating humans in, as man and woman, I think that there could be a tension there. Definitely insinuated, I don't know if it would have been purposeful to like start strife or anything, but if we had all been created the same, then we wouldn't go forward because everyone would be the same. It's only in holding tensions and differences that things happen or take a different path than you would have expected. So yes, I think my Catholic identity and my queer identity are certainly in tension in a lot of different ways. Um, so first of all, I think there's the more obvious way um, through Catholic teachings. So um, in the Catechism, it, it says that the practice of homosexuality is disordered. Um, so that's, that's a direct tension right there. So identifying as queer immediately makes you disordered or makes the way you love disordered. Being explicitly told that the way they feel called to love is wrong is really, really very isolating. Um, and to say that the only way that a queer person can contribute or have a place in the church is to give up that part of themselves is a lot to ask of someone. I think uh, gay people in the church, um, I think the biggest barrier is language. Um, the catechism, for example, can sound very condemning uh, towards gay people. And um, hardline statements by uber conservative bishops or cardinals plays into that and I think the church has a good message at its core but I think the way that message has been promoted sometimes does more harm than good and I think so Francis is a good a good balance for that um, he's definitely changing the language the church uses to promote the same message but he's not changing the message which I think is important so while changing the language is all well and good, that's just syntax. Let's talk about meaning behind that. Um, let's talk about the hurt that has been caused and, and the pain that I personally feel um, a lot. Um, and the pain of being excluded and being talked down to by church leaders. And um, you know, not that I've personally experienced it, but the pain of being kicked out of your family because your family is Catholic and doesn't want you, or the pain of losing friends. Um, there's so much history, um, and a change in language is not enough. There's a, there's a quote I've been kicking around in my head recently that there is no <coughs> liberal Catholic or conservative Catholic. There's only, there's only Catholic, there's only the faith. I'm a Catholic because I, first of all, I find the most truth and life in Catholicism. But also, I, I find the Eucharist essential to, to my faith life. And I don't think that I can find the Eucharist fully in any other place except for Catholicism um, in the celebration of the Mass. Um, so. Even though there are times when I disagree with Catholicism, I, I, need, I need the Eucharist. So I'm choosing to be a part of a church that I know is flawed in the hopes that I can help make it better.